Good day, Bruce Trevena here from CAD Group. Today we're going to have a look at isometric setup in within Plant 3D. Let's go to our project manager, project setup. Isometric drawing settings. And our first display we have the ISO style setup. So I'll select the style that I want to work on today. So it'll be an isometric drawing. Advanced defaults. Level of congestion. This has changed in 2014. There's quite a a, 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 a much greater level of um, control in the slider there. Annotations, dimensions, slope offset piping are very much as they were. <coughs> Title block and display. We'll come back and have a look at the isometric symbols in a minute, but we'll just quickly. So the areas can be nominated by representing rectangles on the um, on your drawing sheet. This file is an ISO DWT file. And within that ISO DWT there is a block. And that block, if we just go properties, has the identifier title space block DWG. So if you want to customize your drawing sheet, uh, my recommendation is that you go edit block in place or open block editor. And now you have your you're within the title space block DWG file. So if you have any drawing sheet geometry, I drop it into here. There can be complications if you've got embedded block identifiers with their own attributes. So best to explode any blocks that you might have in your drawing sheet geometry, so that the attributes here are the attributes that um, uh, you're either linking through an LDT file or through project properties. I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Now if we look at the toolbar from left to right, you've got a no draw area and draw area. Draw area is the green rectangle. No draw area is a rectangle and that can just be placed like so. Bill of materials is this rectangle here. Cut piece list is this rectangle. World list, spool list I've placed down the bottom here. Now table setup. This You can access each of those tables through this drop down list and then you can control the appearance of those tables. So for instance in my bullet material table I've added a field for weight. You could also, if you choose, add a field for item code. If you uh, have unique identifiers in your Plant 3D specs that you'd like to see on your bill of material, that can be brought on. You can also choose to create separate fabrication and erection sections in your, in your bill of materials so that the spooled items are in one section and the loose items uh, uh, are in another section for separate delivery. You can also control the descriptors in your bill of material whether you want to use the long description family or long description size if you've got embedded size information into your descriptor that might be different to the nominal size such as polyethylene piping with a OD larger than the flange normal diameter. Place the north arrow is fairly obvious. Title block attributes. So there's a number of ways to apply attributes to your drawing sheet. You can select the, the general client or project data that you have entered at the in the general section of your project setup. You've got drawing properties, which are AutoCAD drawing properties. You've got line group properties. This is P3D line group properties. 
So if you've added any properties to your P3D line group, you'll be able to pull those values in onto your drawing sheet as attributes. And you also have LDT attributes. And we'll have a look at this in a little more detail. So if you have an external sheet, it might, might be a line list represented as a LDT file, a line designation table. As long as your left-hand column has a, a unique line number identifier, the, and any additional columns that you have in that sheet can be uh, um, identified as attributes on your isometric drawing. So let's just have a look at this one. I've got an LDT file in my related drawings, related files section called ldt.xls. I just have the one worksheet called sheet one. My header row is row one and the line number column is line number without a space. We can just view sheet to see what it looks like. So I have my line number column on the on, on the left hand side and these are the unique identifiers. This is the pop line group identifier. That's not the concatenated line number. Now any of these column headers can be brought straight onto the isometric as attributes just as they are, just in the syntax that they're presented at along the top there. And when an isometrics run, the line number is, is um, identified, and then the corresponding value for those attributes is placed on the isometric. So an LDT file is quite handy for uh, rev capturing revision information. So Rev1, Rev2, Rev3, Shoot4, etc. And oh, I shouldn't have closed that. Let's just open that up again. So I have my line designation table set up done. Now I can go to place attributes, select line designation table attributes, and each of those headers is present across the top there. So for instance, I haven't Actually, I have already added the attributes for Descriptor 4, but just to demonstrate, I'll remove that Rev 4 place, just drop the attribute onto the sheet like that. Here's where we have our AutoCAD dimension styles, leader styles, table styles, and text styles that we can identify. We can also identify the layer designations for various component classes. Uh, we can nominate an annotation text size, and we can nominate a symbol scale. Now, override themes. One override theme is small bore piping. New override themes can be created in the XML file. In small bore piping, you, you can uh, define as a pipe below a particular size. And for small bore piping, you can have a, a different set of parameters. For instance, your symbol scale can be 15 or 10. If you want to do your symbols half the size for small bore piping. Turn to project setup and the live preview. So 
So you don't need to leave your AutoCAD uh, isometric setup environment to to see the effect that your uh, customization changes have on the isometric output. Okay. Let's go back to title block and display and go to isometric symbols. So the symbols represented on the isometric and these symbols are independent of the ISO style you choose. All ISO styles share this symbol, the symbol library. So you have your annotation symbols. If you want to, for instance, rectangle. Let's just open that. So if you find that the rectangle is sitting fairly tightly around your text, you can stretch the rectangle out so that it doesn't sit as close to your text. Just make sure that you have your wipeout displaying so that you can stretch your wipeout as well. your operator symbols here as well for your valve operators. As well as your eccentric, concentric reducers, T's, valves, etc. Now you can create new symbols up here by typing in the name of a new symbol. You'll need to have or already have a component in your 3D system that you would like to map to this symbol, and you'll need to have an S key that you associate with this isometric symbol through the mapping table. We'll have a look at that in a second. Okay. So this isometric DWG settings graphic user interface drives an XML file and I'll just pull in that XML file. Here we have the ISO config XML file. This is, a, this is the Visual Studio text editor. You can use any HTML text editor. And there's a number of things you can do here that you can't do through the graphic user interface. And one example is for uppercase true. So if the descriptors in your piping specifications use upper and lower case, you can force the bill of material and isometric to display uppercase. You also have drawing name format. At the moment, the drawing name format is using a model property pipeline reference. So you could add additional parameters here so that you could concatenate your drawing name format from any of your project or drawing properties. For instance, project identify area number. Now there are a number of other things that you can do in this XML file. You can set particular annotation styles. For instance, you could put an M prefix to your bolt size so that you could have M16, M, M22 bolt designations in your um, bill of material on your isometric. You can set prefixes to your world styles. You can con control the annotations of the line number uh, and other, um, other identifiers on your isometrics as well. So I'll just demonstrate how I've set up the M bolt size. We just come down here to unit styles and I've created a new unit style called M bolt prefix. And I've added, added this line by copying and pasting one of the existing lines. The unit format is decimal. Precision one is fine. And the prefix is M, uppercase M. Now I call that style down below in the bolt diameter style. 
So bold diameter style for metric is now calling m bold prefix style, which has the m prefix. And that's the only modification you need to make the XML file to bring an m prefix into for your bolt sizes. There is a document that's been published on the Autodesk Exchange site recently that is a great help for setting up your isometrics. There's a white paper here, Demystifying AutoCAD Isometrics, PDF. So I'd recommend downloading that and having a look through it because it has uh, quite a number of relevant uh, sections on how to set up your isometrics and has some good example configurations towards the end. Now there's one other XML file I want to look at today and that's the ISO S key ACAD block map XML. So the S key that we were referring to earlier from the CAT and spec editor is identified here in the XML file. So the map is between the S key, so this is the elbow S key. The question mark, question mark, identify the end type. So they can be wild cards, that's a wild card for the end type. So maybe FL for flange, SW for socket world, SC for screwed, etc. etc. So all the uh, objects that are in, in plant 3D inline objects such as pipe, fittings, valves, flanges, etc. and actuators have an S key and they have a representation on the isometric. So fittings, OLEDs, flanges, valves and valve operators. And as we looked at the simple editor before, particular valve operators have a block identifier. And if you want that particular operator to appear on your isometric, make sure that it has the, the relevant S key in your CAT and spec editor. And just to confirm, operators need to be copied to your spec along with the valves. They don't appear in your listing of your spec items, but if you copy them to your spec, then you'll be able to uh, allocate them to valves in your spec. That's um, pretty well all I intended to cover with this this webinar. If there are any questions, you're welcome to email support at cadgroup.com.au and uh, we'll, we'll try and help you as much as we can. Cool. Thank you for your attention and see you soon. Thank you. Bye.